Update on News Talk. The Football Show on Off the Ball. Brought to you by the new and improved Boyle Sports Bet Builder. Now with 44 markets to choose from on every match. I prepare to end it I can. Well, do it then. Again. Do it then. What about your start to the game? I was, it wasn't bad, was it? <laughs> Why should be an honest answer be a mistake? How can a modern day manager not have a mobile phone? Why should he? Oh. Champions League quarterfinals continue. It's just a dreary night for Manchester United, to be honest. They're seeing this one out. Everybody knows the uh, result. It's a foregone conclusion, <laughs> Kenny. Even you will admit that. 48 minutes on the clock, Barcelona 2, Manchester United 0. It's still one all between Juve and Ajax. 2-2 two, two in aggregate. This Ajax team aren't going away. I know you really like them. So uh, how would you sum up the... Well, for 47 minutes gone from when Messi scored on 20 minutes after Manchester United's brilliant start. How would you sum up the last half hour or so of this game? I know second half's just underway. Yeah, it's a good start to the second half. Certainly it has been a, a dreary to watch. Manchester United clearly want, have got to go chasing the game, so it lends itself to a, a good spectacle uh, to watch. Lingard, half a chance there, the early stage of the second half, Joe, with a uh, last-ditch tack from Busquets, uh, just took the ball away from inside the box. And then Messi, a really good chance inside the box. You actually expected him to score. Suarez broke on the inside, uh, left channel into the box, just kind of cut it back just inside the 18-yard box. Messi just walking onto the ball, onto his left foot under no pressure and just kind of didn't quite catch it. Flush and Ashley Young deflected it wide. So potentially more goals in, in this game. Mars, Barcelona look as if they're hungry uh, for, for more goals. United clearly need to go searching for them. So I still think there's goals in this game. But United, obviously, you're saying it's game over. Yeah, I think... Can't quite bring myself to, <laughs> to, <laughs> to say. I've got to be honest with you, because I just I keep thinking, have you not got a goal in them? Yeah, clearly. And if they get it, two one, a half an hour to go. It's football, Joe. Who, who knows? Highly unlikely. I, I understand that, but Manchester United, we're not playing like a team who are beaten. Yeah. But I, I think just those deficiencies probably we I spoke about a little bit maybe tonight and have done previously. Just across that uh, defensive line, yeah. you know, just it's it's hurt him again uh, this evening, and ultimately it's probably is going to cost him over the two legs. Yeah, so we'll keep a very close eye on that. We've, uh, I mean, podcast listeners, you'll have ju- you'll just heard the first hour of the show where we brought you through the bulk of what happened at the Oireachtas Committee this afternoon. If you're just tuning in now, you can get that full podcast. It'll give you a really good sense of what happened today. We're going to hear from Ruth Coppinger, TD, who was at the Oireachtas Committee this afternoon and has been over the last number of weeks. The two big news stories, if you are just tuning in and we're away for the afternoon, is uh, one, the FAI board have announced that they will be resigning en masse. Every member of the board will go come July. And the other news is that it seems the FAI's accounts are not being kept properly. This came to light before today's Oireachtas Committee. Uh, What's happened here is that Deloitte, who audit the FAI, have uh, filed a notice with the company's registration office. Deloitte uh, state that proper accounting records have not been kept by the FAI. Basically, when Deloitte or any auditors find this, they're obliged to let the company's registration office know if they're of the opinion that the company, in this case the FAI, is contravening or has contravened the Companies Act 2014. Deloitte have seen the accounts and they have now sounded the alarm. So the CRO, the Company Registration Office, will be required to forward a copy of this notice onto the Office of the Director of Corporate Enforcement. And this is rare. This is not a usual occurrence. The Irish Times today were making the point that the filing of the form called a H4 with the Office of the Director of Corporate Enforcement is a rare event in Irish corporate life. The filing relating to the FAI is just the first this year in the country and only four have been filed since the beginning of 2018. And Neve Brennan, Professor of Corporate Governance at UCD, was quoted as saying, it does not get more serious for directors than their company being reported for not keeping proper accounting records. There were reports as well that uh, such offences on conviction can lead to fines of up to half a million euro or even terms of imprisonment of up to 10 years for a Category 1 offence. And we'll say no more about that for the time being. Niall Quinn was speaking this lunchtime at an event on the future of Irish football. The uh, media... Uh, saw him outside Leinster House and got his reaction to the news that the FAI board will be resigning. I think you're sitting in a car to traffic lights and the traffic lights have gone green, but you, you know, you've got to put it in gear now and get it to move. It's not going to go by itself. And so there's some, some important, uh, important detail now to, 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 to study and to work out. Uh, 
for a lot of people who would be interested in bringing this forward. And, and I, I'm, I'm confident that this represents opportunity. It, it, it's, it's, it's pitiful that it's come to this, but that's the way it is. Now I think that the, the gates are open and, and the opportunity is there. Uh, it's a chance that we can't get wrong. But it's not a silver bullet chance that changes things overnight. This is an opportunity, like any great organisation or business that has to, 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 to reboot itself and reignite itself, it's going to take time, it's going to take brilliant people, dynamic people, but again, it needs the League of Ireland and the professional game at the very top of the agenda. And everything else can pyramid down below that, and we remove the fragmented setup and structures of football in this country. I think that would be high on, on my list. I don't mean get rid of them, I mean put them into a much better system, whereby uh, everybody can benefit as one, and we don't have this fragmented league this, league that. I mean, it, it, it's hard to keep track of it. I think there's 49 different schoolboy leagues in the country. I mean, where is that all leading? You know, let, let's get on one pathway. Let, let's take a leaf out of the GAA's book, even though we can be much better. Take a leaf, leaf out of rugby's book in other areas, but be much better. And, 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 are, you, are you saying uh, people are queuing up, I suppose, to be involved with the reform? Of the there, there, there would be plenty of people now, uh, really qualified, qualified on the global stage, you know? And, and I think the, the, these voices need to be listened to as people make decisions about who should who should be uh, should be involved. And is that in terms of repopulating the board and the role of CEO, or yeah, uh, and, and, in that process? And, and, and I, I believe repopulating the board and and uh, appointing executives, you know, who, whose role it will be to to, to to be as dynamic as a, as an incoming CEO and to to seize the opportunity now to uh, to, to to reach for reach for you know for new levels. Of, of uh, success with the association and make make you know make us all feel great about football in this country again. Not go looking for Declan Rice's and Jack Grealish's. Let's let's now be the starting point where we, we, we discover them in our own backyard and, and obviously we'll never turn down the opportunity for to play, but you know, let's 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 try and put the focus back on, on developing our players, keeping them in this country and, and putting a system in place in football that young people aspire to, to be a part of, that want to stay, but we also educate them and we make them find strong men. And we take a leaf at the, Nor the Norwegian examples or the Icelandic examples, and we stop the boat over to England for our 15-year-olds because they're going to some very poor clubs, as, as from what I can see, and, and having a 100 to 1 shot on their lives, way too young. Um, we have a chance now to, to put so much in place here as, as, as a, an organisation, an association. It's a chance to step into the, to the next great era I hope of Irish football and, and as I say it, it's not going to be easy it's, it's not a silver bullet what's happened right now uh, it's an opportunity for change but there's some real hard yards to go I just hope that the correct people are put in place to do that Yeah that's going to be key and that was discussed today at the Oireachtas Committee we'll uh, be joined by Ruth Coppinger in just one moment but if you are tuning in now to give you a sense really of what happened today it's very hard to condense it all obviously many hours into uh, just a clip or two uh, certainly one of the key points is that uh, Sport Ireland met with the FAI last night and they came to an agreement that there would be a serious audit of the FAI's business. And even in one of the final clips we played you earlier on in the show, uh, Kieran Mulvey was talking in response to a question from Senator Mark Daly. And when you listen to Kieran Mulvey's answer here, he is generally a pretty reasoned man and doesn't speak without due consideration. And Mark Daly asked about how we can even trust the Grant Thornton report or the Mazars report. And... Uh, frankly, as you'll hear, Kieran Mulvey said, uh, based on everything that's gone on here, well, we can't. My, my concern on all of this is we were given information last week um, when the FAI were here from the FAI president, and we were told that um, Grant Thornton were quite happy with the information we were getting uh, in relation to the 100,000 loan and its payment and all of that. My concern on this is, and it goes back to what Mr. Mulvey said, is who's auditing the auditors? We had the exact same problem with banks, where auditors were signing off on accounts wholesale, and yet it's always the taxpayer who is picking up the tab when the auditors go, oh, you know what, we got that wrong. I think in this instance, it is simply unacceptable, and it's up to yourselves. If you're comfortable that Grant Thornton and Mazars are going to do the job, even though the people paying them are the FAI and the people writing the terms of reference of the FAI, I think we need to be concerned that, in, a, in essence, you're in charge and you should write the terms of reference and if you have to pay the check but like the problem here is we've got information drip fed to us from both of those in one way or the other through various uh, through the FAI and others that now 
is questionable. And I'm concerned that they could continue now to be in the position where they're reviewing. They're now also reviewing themselves because they've provided information to us that is of concern. Okay, Deputy, Deputy O'Brien. Thanks, Joe. And I don't have... Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Do you want to answer a question? Sorry. Yeah. Um, Senator Daly, uh, the issues you raised are the issues that we're concerned about. Uh, we had this engagement in, with the FEI last night. Now, uh, we were shown the terms of reference for the Mazars review, and our team here looked at them, the four of us here looked at them. They are extensive, and they appear to us to be rigorous, but we haven't completed our discussions around them. Neither have they completed their discussions, as I understand it, and was led to believe last night with the Office of Corporate Enforcement. In regard to, and it was raised earlier by, I think, in Deputy Munster in particular, our view, given what happened last night, and we were not told about, and we, we have cha we, we've had to now take the view that whatever Mazars do or Grant Thornton do, we will have to be assured as the state agency involved here and given all that has gone on, that we conduct our own independent audit forensic or otherwise, whatever term we want to use, as to what they're reviewing and what they're uh, involved in. Because I, I have to accept what has been said here. We can't rely on this anymore. Neither as the committee, as you, your own experience. We will have to be satisfied ourselves through our own auditor, externally appointed by us, mm -hmm. that the information that's been provided by the other auditors. Essentially going to be auditing the auditors. Yeah, we're going to have to do this. And we're going to have to give our auditors rigor rigorous instructions in regard to this. So we're not made fools of, and we don't make fools of you when we come to report back to you. Yeah, Kieran Mulvey there at the Oireachtas Committee. Still 2-0 Barcelona on the night, still one all between Juve and Ajax. We're joined by Ruth Coppinger, Solidarity TD for Dublin West, and of course on the Oireachtas Committee on Transport tourism and sport. Ruth, thanks for joining us. Uh, no problem, thanks. It's been an eventful few weeks. It certainly has. Um, I'm not on this committee that long and uh, this is the most exciting thing that's happened on it so far. No, um, I think actually the serious issues here, uh, it's kind of symptomatic of the level of, to be honest, acceptance of corruption and bad practice that exists. I don't just mean in sport, I mean in society in general. So we, we saw the carry-on of the FAI last week. Mm. Uh, we don't need to rehash that. Mm -hmm. But today there were also other things introduced at the last minute. So we got this late letter from the FAI saying that the board was to step down. Mm. But I would put a few uh, cautionary points on that. I mean, I would question, why should the boards who oversaw all of the problems that are now being exposed, including, by the way, which we only found out today and which they did not tell Sport Ireland about in a meeting, that the uh, company registration office has been notified of accounting uh, procedures not being complied with, which yeah. is actually, if it emerges to be true, a criminal offence. Yeah. Now, that's really serious. I mean, it's only happened two or three times, they said. Yeah, four times Four times yeah. since the start of 2018 this has happened. So it's so incredibly my, serious. My first question was, like, why should we just accept at face value that the board stays until July? I mean, in, to me, they're part of the problem, not the solution. Why should they be left to carry out a so-called cleansing operation? Mm in the FAI. Can they be trusted to do that? I don't think people believe they can. Um, they haven't answered the most basic of questions about the loan, about all of the uh, issues that were raised at the meeting last week. Yeah. And uh, I think the other issues that emerged today is how they've given, obviously, Sport Ireland the runaround, including up as late as last night. Well, if people didn't but catch also, it, John, John Tracy was clearly livid that they met with the FAI last night and the FAI didn't care to mention to Sport Ireland that the entire board would be announcing their resignation within about 12 hours. Exactly. And uh, the, the other question that hasn't been answered mm. 
the, I mean, the elephant in the room is what about John Delaney? He's yeah, not uh, we, even we, on the board now. Yeah, that, uh, that still wasn't clear. We played a number of clips. We played Kieran Mulvey talking about guarding leave. We played John Tracy, frankly, saying, I don't know what's gone on there. So are we any the wiser about John Delaney's position? Well, yes, we are. I asked uh, the minister and I asked Sport Ireland, had they or were they going to ask that the board would abolish this post that they created, mm. which was created for one candidate only, not to be advertised to anybody else. And uh, would they be asked to do that? They said that they couldn't do that for yeah, legal we played, reasons. We played that clip, both Minister Ross and John Tracy referenced not wanting to end up in the High Court and having yeah. to respect due process. But it was it was clear when in your questioning of John Tracy where you were outlining uh, the nature of how the executive vice president role came around. He was saying in a very knowing way, I know, I know, I know, I know, as if to acknowledge that there are big question marks over the Jonathan Hall Associates report. But uh, clearly one of the issues here between now and July is that there are legalities, there is due process, mm. which is going to be, uh, have to be respected. And uh, the answer you seem to get, by the way, on, on why the board would oversee this new dawn for the FAI is that if the board were to, say, resign en masse tomorrow, for instance, that there would be a leadership vacuum, that Sport Ireland, Minister Ross, yeah, but that, they but felt they needed they, they felt they, I mean, they, felt they need a board to work with. could be created, and I don't see why it would take forever and a day to set up a board of five or six people. Would they I lack mean, the expertise to deal with UEFA and to deal with the government? Well, what expertise has, has this board shown? I mean, this is a board which wasn't told about financial shortfall mm. by its own finance committee, which doesn't seem to have minutes and report back to the full board. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, we could go on ad nauseum here. I, like, I just don't accept that. I know it was okay. said by the Minister on Sport Ireland, but I think that's just an excuse. Um, I, I just don't think that the board should be involved trusted mm. to uh, like uh, you've already played the the footage there about this Mazars review mm. I mean Sport Ireland said today they hadn't got a copy of the terms of reference of that review by Mazars mm. they had seen us they, they but, but they've been it's like a secret organization here mm. But there, um, there was a, there was a, there was a kind of it was implied that maybe Sport Ireland would have some input into the terms of reference on Mazars well, they can do, and um, but but why shouldn't they? I mean, they're meant to be. I know their powers are limited, but they're meant to have a role in terms of governance. Mm. And given that the FAI has blatantly breached the terms and conditions of receiving grant aid, I don't think that they would be in a strong position to refuse. I mean, I think there's been light touch regulation by Sport Ireland. But it also, this is another issue. Like going forward, what do we do? Mm. So I raised today. Um, and was raised by others, is the minister going to bring in or is he going to use the powers that he does have to increase uh, the powers of Sport Ireland to regulate? Now, they made it clear, by the way, they didn't really want to be a regulator for sport. They wanted more to be a promoter of sport. Mm. And fine, I can understand that. But if they don't regulate the FAI and other sporting organisations, well, then who does? And the minister has had ample time to think about this. I mean, we, we've been meeting about this for a couple of weeks and he said he'd consider it. He hasn't even given it proper thought. I mm. mean, it's really obvious that it's as clear as the nose in our face that there's no effective regulation of in Irish sports. So we've had the Olympic Council of Ireland. Yeah. We've had issues in boxing with the FAI. Uh one thing that did emerge that I thought was interesting, I mean, John Tracy agreed that there were similarities between uh, the Olympic Council of Ireland and uh, this. Mm. He talked about strong personalities who were leading uh, these organisations and people were afraid to challenge them. Yeah. And I also put it to him that would he also agree a similar feature was personal aggrandizement and nest feathering by these strong personalities at mm. the helm. Mm. Uh, because I do think there's a question, and it's not about the FAI in football, because obviously I think football um, is really important. But why should the taxpayer be putting public funds into organisations that allow their CEOs have these massively inflated salaries, unknown expenses, we're only left to guess based on 
reports in the newspapers, which haven't been denied yet, by the way, by the yeah. board yeah. of the FAI, yeah. and uh, who we know have had a, a lavish kind of lifestyle around being the head of these sporting organisations. And I don't think that's good enough. Mm. But yet there doesn't seem to be the political will to have done anything about it. And by the way, I also blamed politicians for this as well. Yeah, been I saw that today. Yeah. It's a fair point because, I mean, look, human nature is what it is. And it's up to the government, it's up to Sport Ireland to try and regulate this as best they can. Like Sport Ireland's general, if you like boil down what they were saying, it was, well, frankly, we don't have any power to do much more than we do. And on, yeah. in the, on the initial hearing with John Tracy when you guys were trying to ascertain what the hell was going on, he basically said, look, you know, we can only audit the, the money that we give to the FAI, which in the grand scheme of 50 million per annum, their turnover is not very much. It might be two, three million. Whereas with other organizations like uh, boxing, for instance, they might give 70, 80 percent of the money so they can really get in and audit the vast bulk of how money is being spent. But like that's not really satisfactory. You know, like your your turnover shouldn't insulate you from being regulated properly in this country in this day and age. So uh, Minister Ross is going to have to revisit that in a serious way and Sport Ireland are going to have to push for that. Yeah, and I think the committee members, I mean, TDs and others have to now say that this is something that's a line has been crossed. I, I think the FAI is obviously much more important in society, or, well, much more influential, if you know what I mean, in terms of the breadth of its involvement and participation than the other sporting groups where there's been issues. Um, but everybody has known, I mean, the dogs on the street have known about these issues for a long time. Um, minister after minister came and went and didn't do anything about it. I mean, they're, they're happy to take the plaudits when a team wins and they're there arriving and greeting them and in the case of Charlie Hall he's sitting on the back of Stephen Roach's bike or whatever yeah. um, but yes when there's a huge uh, malpractice or, or wrongdoing it's a hands off approach you know and um, I don't think it's acceptable like obviously I think sports should be funded but I don't think it's acceptable that you say oh listen over here that's the state funding and that's completely separate from the stuff that was raised privately because, you know, you do have to question if public money is better spent giving it to some other sporting organisation well, that doesn't I, pay I, a CEO I think that's, 400 I, grand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, look, I say this as a football. I, I grew up playing football, so it's, it's kind of my sport. I love it. Um, but I think there's an argument, you know, like it can look after itself. It's almost so popular. I, we see so many brilliant mm. sports people in here and frankly, they, they get nothing, you know, or at least make sure that the Irish women's team are not changing in bathrooms into tracksuits. Yeah. So, uh, like, there's a real question for an organisation like football and how, you know, the, I think the grants are up for, um, I think the, the deadline is up very soon and we're going to have to look at how we spend money and distribute money. Um, there's a clip of uh, Shane Ross, I'm going to play it in a second as well, speaking in November. We're just trying to turn it around, but it will tie in with our overall conversation. It's kind of come to our attention in the last five, ten minutes or so, so we're kind of struggling to turn it around, but it's him speaking in November. The lads will give me a wave when we have it. Do we think we have it? So listen, this is a bit ridiculous, right, because this uh, is a bit incongruous for the conversation. There's uh, music from Curb Your Enthusiasm on underneath it because at the time this clip was deemed funny because Shane Ross was getting the players' names wrong, as he, you know, has done on several <laughs> occasions. So that was the reason it was funny initially, but there is a point in the clip ignore the music, like when we're talking about what's happened here, when we're talking about what's been exposed in the FAI, just listen to what Shane Ross is saying to Jonathan Healy back in November on uh, the Pat Kenny show. My own experience actually is on the ground. I have, you know, a weekly, weekend, a weekly, weekend experience of this. Uh, is that the fans are very enthusiastic about what the FAI is doing and they think the FAI is doing a, a very good job. Uh, no, criti you don't hear criticism. You don't hear people giving out. No, I don't. What I do hear is I, do, I read about it in the press all night. But I think that they see, and, and there's a lot of criticism of, of John Delaney as well. And my own experience is that when I go to these local games in the constituency on the ground, that I see John Delaney and representatives of the FAI there all the time, and they're always on the ground doing things relating to those 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 really important things which which young people are doing. Now I feel like we should let that hang. <laughs> I feel like we should let that hang for about two minutes of silence and let that sink in. In fact, you know what? Play it again if people didn't catch that, because in light of what's happened, it's ludicrous. 
my own experience actually is on the ground. I have, you know, a weekly weekend, a weekly weekend experience of this. Uh, is that the fans are very enthusiastic about what the FAI is doing, and they think the FAI is doing a, a very good job. Uh, no, criti- you don't hear criticism. You don't hear people giving out. No, I don't. What I do hear is I, do, I read about it in the press all night. But I think that they see, and, and there's a lot of criticism of, of John Delaney as well. And my own experience is that when I go to these local games in the constituency on the ground, that I see John Delaney and represent the FAI there all the time, and they're always on the ground doing things relating to those 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 really important things which which young people are doing. There we are. So I mean, like when we're talking about a wider problem, you know. I think it's kind of speechless. Well, d- just, I mean, in terms of uh, Minister Ross, he's on, he's Minister for Transport and Sport. And I tourism. don't think he, I'm not sure if he's ever used public transport. He did, he tweeted, he, tw- he, he, a tweeted match. he tweeted, in reality, he, he tweeted, he tweeted from a bus like once, there, you know? he tweeted from a, bu- a bus once to say how much he was enjoying his bus ride, I think. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but did you know what though on, on that point because he is accused of not being a sports fan and he mixed up the Carney brothers and he wasn't sure of Robbie Brady's name I have no issue with that right I, I, look it's not ideal and you'd love a sports fan to be in that position I actually don't care if he knows who Rob Carney mm. is from Dave Carney this, that is not that's not important to his job in many ways it's about oversight it's about regulation and we're talking about the most popular sport in the country here and that's what he's saying about it in November yeah and it's also this idea that John Delaney travelled around and kept the grassroots happy by opening up facilities, etc. I mean, we had this last week at the committee with Michael Healy Ray. John Delaney didn't personally pay for the facilities for grassroots. In mm. fact, it was paid for by the taxpayer or by people contributing money going to matches, right? Whatever the source was. Um, so it's just this idea that you travel around and you do loads of work and you open up. It's like a government minister. You know, the way they open up different facilities, they're, they're never there when they actually close, by the way. But in the general scheme of things, just to bring this back yeah. as to where we go now, yeah. um, there's a few issues. There's the board, right? I mean, the type of board that I think we need, I think we need to completely uh, sack or they need to step down this board because they have overseen all of these problems and have contributed to the cover-up of information. Uh, but the type of board that we need in the long run is one that's made up also of representatives, of players, of supporters, of people who do the work at grassroots level, you know, day in and day out, as well as people who have, you know, business acumen. Yeah. Often people of both. I, I challenged um, John Tracy on that. I just think that the culture of deference and, you know, not challenging John Delaney has been seems to have been what's been there by people who are in situ for a long time. Then, on in terms of the other issues, I, I think that the FAI is in trouble because if the Office of uh, the Director of Corporate Enforcement are pursuing a number of issues mm-hmm. uh, on a co- company regulations level and also this breach that we, we, we have had reported today, I mean, this is really serious, you know? Yeah. Um, some of the acts, if true, are criminal. Uh, that's the reality. And people don't tend to, wealthy people don't tend to go to jail in Ireland for these things. But we have to demand that these things are prosecuted. Yeah, well, now, well, well, honestly, look, well, well, due, 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 pro- due, due process will have to take its course. Nobody's con- been convicted of anything. I think we should be fair in that mm-hmm. point. But it is a serious development today. We can agree on that. And then we have to let legalities take court. You know, take their yeah. course. Nobody's been even remotely convicted of anything, and we don't have many details on what's happened today. So it's important just to make that point, and we don't want to oh, uh, do anything I to jeopardise anything. Needs to anything. Be fully prosecuted, yeah. and I meant legally. Yeah, okay, okay, you know? yeah, that's a good, yeah. important point to clarify. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not. Of course, nobody uh, has been found guilty of anything. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, there's a tendency in Ireland. You know, there's a crony capitalism. Uh, operations and, and type of mentality, and these things are excused or brushed aside. And um, I don't think that should be the case. Um, but I would say that having gotten rid of the board and brought in a, a different board, we do need to properly fund football. And actually, I did make some points in my questioning last week 
there's actually some evidence that if you look at the level of participation, it could do with more funding, but that is not going to happen Yeah. as long as you have this complete uh, profligate lifestyle enjoyed by the people running it. Okay. Listen, we'll leave it there. Ruth Coppinger, thanks very much. Thanks. Ruth Coppinger there, part of the Oireachtas Committee, Solidarity TD for Dublin West. Kenny is keeping an eye on the game. Uh, it's Juventus 1, Kenny, Ajax 2. Delete with the goal, our uh, centre half wonder kid. No. Ajax 2 1 up, that's 3 uh, 2 up, and with an away goal. Uh, meanwhile, Barcelona are 3 0 up. I'll get you to tell us about the Barcelona third goal. Just one sec, have to take an outbreak. Football on Off the Ball. Brought to you by the new and improved Boyle Sports Bet Builder. Now with 44 markets to choose from on every match. The Pat Kenny Show. Where do I start? You're all kind of making up your own kind of excuses. There are different why. views, right? Yeah, well, there are different views. You would, you would reject that wholly. What well, I would say to you is very, very clear. I cannot allow you to say this. We don't need to feed anything else, you know, more fuel into this fire. The Pat Kenny Show. Who's Who's fundamental charge is that yours or somebody else's? Weekdays at 9am. With MasterCard. On News Talk. Nothing quite like a good debate. If you're thinking of buying a residential rental property, ICS Mortgages can provide an excellent range of flexible buy-to-let mortgages, including interest-only terms of up to 15 years. We'll also help you to refinance your existing portfolio and grow your property investments. Call 1890-427-427, visit icsmortgages.ie or contact your local mortgage broker. ICS Mortgages, the property investor's choice. Lending criteria, terms and conditions apply and are subject to change. The entire amount that you have borrowed will still be outstanding at the end of the interest-only period. Dilosk DAC, trading as Dilosk and ICS Mortgages, is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. That's the sound of Sarah, enjoying a walk in the fresh spring weather while her Bosch 9kg washing machine does all the hard work at home. With no noise, thanks to the Eco Silent System. She got this Which Best Buy award-winning washing machine from Harvey Norman for the low price of €529, saving her €40. Plus, she got a €35 one-for-all voucher with this washing machine. For more great savings on Bosch, visit Harvey Norman in-store or online. Your to-do list. It's always pretty chock-a-block. There's the things from yesterday you never got to yesterday. And the things for today you'll probably put off till tomorrow. But don't put off saving up to €647. Go direct to Energia and switch to Ireland's cheapest dual fuel bundle. For the biggest savings, the thing to do is to always go direct. Visit energia.ie. Energia, the power behind your savings. EAB €1,470 based on average annual usage, 12-month contract, discounted unit rates, standing charge, PSO levy and carbon tax, T's and C's and early termination fee apply. Valid from March 2019 and subject to change. Verification and T's and C's at energia.ie forward slash EAB. Off the ball. This this is News Talk. Yeah, well, Max, so uh, Joe here, Kenny here. Uh, 80 minutes on the clock. 3-0 Barcelona. The third goal. And I'll admit, Kenny, I was talking to Ruth Coppinger about the Eructus Committee, so I didn't see it in my very best uh, way, but uh, it looked like Coutinho curled one in beautifully into the top right far corner. Yeah, something Liverpool supporters would have got very used to seeing uh, during the time Coutinho spent at Anfield. Yeah, received the ball, playing off the left job, but receive, receiving the ball in the central area. Uh, in a little pocket of space, distance between the Manchester United back forward and, and the midfield, it got too big, big little uh, chasm of space opened up. He drifted into it, he received the ball off, I think it was Suarez, just popped it back into his feet and just shifted it onto his right foot. And, yeah, like I said, any Liverpool's bar would know what was coming next, just opened up his right foot, just whipped it with the inside of the right foot, inside the far corner, quite high actually as well. Uh, no criticism of De Gea on this particular occasion, just mm. a top quality finish. So. Yeah, it's been a polished performance in Barcelona uh, a second half. They probably carry the the greater threat. Hasn't been a huge amount of chances at either end of the pitch. Manchester United have kind of broken kind of sporadically and offered a kind of kind of a threat on occasion. But it's uh, Barcelona have played a more kind of polished football mm. and moving the ball quickly. You know, one and two touch as you would expect through those kind of central layers. I think Suarez had an off night. It's probably worth saying it. I've been impressed with it all. It hasn't happened for him at all. Right. Uh, Messi obviously has made a big impression on the game and, and Coutinho as well who play either side of him have chipped in uh, with the goals but uh, 
Yeah, yeah, done and dusted. A game of what ifs, really, uh, for Manchester United after such an amazing start again. That first 15 minutes, like I said, is good of any, as anything Manchester United support could have expected in terms of uh, quality of football and chances created in that opening period. They just needed to score. Joe, you, they scored a goal in that period of game. Really kind of shifts shifts the kind of uh, the game in terms. It really puts pressure on Barcelona's shoulders, as good a team as they are. So they've got the all important first goal in this game. Really opens the uh, the game up going forward, but didn't do it. Uh, Barcelona got the all important goals uh, through Messi, and yeah, mm. pretty much game over. And had Barcelona been in, so impressive that you'd say, well, this certainly cements their status as tournament favourites, or no, it's so so. Well, yeah, I suppose defensively they look very. Uh, open, especially in the first 15 minutes, really well, like, Yeah, like, but that's always been the case. Even when this Barcelona team were at their very best, Joe, you always felt as if if you could get the ball, if you could get at the uh, Barcelona defensive line, particularly two centre-halves, PK, as good as he is, but a lack of mobility, you can hurt them. But, of course, that's easier said than done, you know, in terms of getting the ball off this Barcelona team for sustained periods of the game. Just uh, Most teams can't. Uh, can't do it but I think the, the Barcelona performance tonight just kind of reinforces what we already know take the, the little man out of the team and you think yeah very very good team but not exception not head and shoulders above anything else uh, but drop the you know the little magician into the team and that's that's the reason why they're probably most people's slight favourites uh, for this uh, competition and of course he's made a difference this evening mm. So they're playing out the last eight minutes there. Again, if you're just tuning in, Ajax have come from a goal down this evening, away from home. Like, this is just uh, an amazing uh, bit of resilience from a young team. Ronaldo scored in 28 minutes. You thought, OK, well, that's that. Uh, it was one all after the first leg. Juventus have gone 2-1 up. And now Ajax have hit back. So eight minutes after Ronaldo scored, Donny van der Beek scored the equaliser yeah. to make it 2-2 in aggregate. And then 67 minutes, Matthias de Ligt this uh, wonder kid centre-half who Kenny, frankly, is in love with, uh, scored their second <laughs> of the night, 67 minutes. So, 3-2 uh, on aggregate, and they have an away goal. you got to score twice. Juventus Juventus, have, yeah. what, eight, nine minutes to score twice? This is unbelievable. Oh, it could be a phenomenal story. I mean, to, to beat a uh, team of the calibre of Real Madrid and Juventus over, over two legs, consecutive rounds of the uh, knockout stage of the Champions League, Will be quite uh, phenomenal, and if they manage to do it, and people start dissecting the team in terms of the the players they have on the pitch, in terms of uh, you know youth, um, inexperience at this level of competition, it's it's quite frightening what they're actually doing. Um, standout players that we've spoken about. You mentioned the lit in terms of how highly I regard him. Joe, Joe, I haven't seen a huge amount of him play. It's just that Real Madrid, Sometimes you just need to watch somebody play yeah, for a short period, even over ninety minutes. Yeah. In the banner of that night, I thought, wow, this kid is is absolutely exceptional. Mm. And still, he's only 19 years of age, the league. Is that? I was reading the last phenomenal. time the last time Ajax played Juve at these kind of stages, it was 97, and Juventus, who were the defending champions, they beat Ajax, and neither Freddie de Jong or de Ligt were even born then, <laughs> <laughs> which make you feel old. Oh, Actually, uh, if we're talking 1990s nostalgia, Kenny, I should mention this to you, we have a very nice show coming up at the Aviva Stadium, 2nd of May. It's a Liverpool special, so we're going to be in the Aviva as we preview the second leg of the Champions League uh, semi-finals in the company of Kenny, Steve McManaman. Steve McManaman coming over to a little roadshow for us on May the 2nd. Uh, more right. special guests to be announced, offtheball.com forward slash events, that's where you get your tickets. A Liverpool special with Steve McManaman, May 2nd, with thanks to Ball Sports. Did you play against McManaman? Oh, I couldn't get near him. Nightmare. Couldn't get near him, Joe. He was one of those players, a dribbler, but, but just the ball was kind of stuck to his, his foot. You were just waiting for that slightly heavy touch. Like with Robbie Keane in the 78 minute last, <laughs> on Friday night when you took him out and nearly broke his leg. And uh, that's poor comparison. Um, <laughs> McMahon was just phenomenal in terms of his run. He was quick, but he was one of them probably just as quick in possession, dribbling with the ball as without. And very quickly, he'd run at you in the halfway line. Before you'd know it, you'd look down, you'd you'd see the the chalk mark of the eighteen yard box. Okay. Because you, you'd backed off. You'd backed off. You'd backed off. Wait, just waiting for that slightly heavy touch, just a go go gadget leg and get a bit of a token. Because sorry to interrupt. I'm imagining here you as Bobby Moore and Pele, and you're backing off and you're backing off, but then you pounce. Is that how it generally finished? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it, de it desperate <laughs> lunge more so than if that's what a pounce means. Because you had to, you panicked it in the end. You felt as if you had to make a 
uh, a tackle, but he was a brilliant all round player. Probably didn't, always struck me as a, uh, somebody like, not overly bothered in terms of goals. You know, some forwards all about, you know, go, go, uh, real assist man. Got as much joy as creating opportunities there uh, for other people. And if the goals came great, if they didn't, they didn't. Mm. But probably showed how good what he was when he made a, tr- a transition to Real Madrid because yeah. they loved him over there. Yeah. They had a lot of games over there, Joe. Champions and was League finals. Yeah, and was yeah. prominent. The winner of the Champions Out League. Out of the match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And was a prominent player for them, like highly regarded. Uh, and he played in, ex- in exceptional teams yeah. over there. So, yeah, a standout player for me. And, it, and I like that Liverpool team because he played with Robbie Fowler played the night as well. Now, Robbie Fowler's carrying a, a little bit away, but technically, a couple of his touches did a night. Joe, just boom, boom, one, two touch, dropping off into little pockets, checking the shoulders. Good. Just gave you, <laughs> just gave, gave you a little flavour, just gave you a little flavour. Yeah. This, 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 you know, this is how it was. What was the score the other night? It was 2-1, it was, uh, it was, it was 2-1, uh, the game. It was a decent game, actually. To who? Uh, to Liverpool. Okay. Yeah, Smee show. And they were a good bunch there. I'll say that Liverpool has a really good bunch. You know, even in the tunnel going out to the lads and high profile players, they're Liverpool players, going out of the way, shaking hands and house things. And yeah, really nice, nice bunch, nice, nice atmosphere on the pitch between the players. Quite competitive the game, to be honest. It was quite a close game. Yeah. Was a de- and that's not easy, a decent enough game. Ronnie was on the pitch playing for uh, Ray Houghton, John Aldridge came on, fair play to them. I mean, well into their 50s and yeah. stuff, were obviously ma- made a contribution. I still as well. think all those living for these games. Yeah, <laughs> but there was enough legs on the pitch to kind of make it a decent, make it quite competitive. Yeah, it was a, it was a really enjoyable night. Uh, I must admit, but Fowler for me, he ju- just took me back a little bit, just a little bit in his moving because Fowler for me was Fowler for me was the best, the best finish I'd ever I'd ever seen I ever pl- played against. Mm. Yeah, ha- hands down. Mm. You know, I look and not the most athletic even in his peak. You know, you looked at him saying, this is somebody who doesn't spend a huge amount of time in the gym. Po- yeah. <laughs> Can I say something? Post training. Is, oh, no, I won't say it. I won't say it. But Joe, he could finish. But a lot of people talk about Michael Owen and Liverpool. For me, oh. uh, can't Fe- hold the torch. In no. terms of goal scorer, Fowler could uh, finish left foot, right foot, to- inside of the foot, yeah. outside of the foot, drill it, good head of the ball. I totally agree with you. Yeah. Michael Owen was even off. He wasn't a look. Michael Owen was a great finisher, but he was off balance most of the time. Fowler was just. Do you know what's funny? The, um, the Salah goal at the weekend. Now, it was a slightly different strike, but it wasn't a million miles away. It reminded me of the one where Fowler pings it. Similar angle, similar camera angle. I think it was against Leeds back in the day. Yeah, and it was baby. just the sweetest yeah. punch into that far corner. Because Rio Ferdinand talked about when uh, Fowler joined Leeds. Yeah. Uh, when, and he was saying, all right, we'll have a look. We'll see what this lad's at, you know. <laughs> we'll see, what he, see what he's about. Because I think Fowler getting his fitness back up was maybe doing a bit of work on his own. And Ferdinand remembers going to watch him side of the pitch after the first team finished training and watching the left foot and thinking, oh my God. Like, oh, I, like I knew he was good, but I actually haven't appreciated the, just the class of this man's left foot. Yeah, so, oh, he's cool. And I'm we spoke surprised. even we spoke about Rashford tonight. That first chance of a key moment of the game for me, first minute of the game, Rashford threw the inside left, just left it at penalty spot. And it was crying out for a touch and a left, a left foot finish. That, that, that's what it needed. Now, it, fl- it flipped that to the other side. If it had been Fowler, Fowler would have been comfortable with that touch off his left and take it, that control finish with yeah. his right That's what I'm talking about, left, right foot. Rash was not quite there yet. In that moment, he was happy to almost unbalance himself and take the harder option yeah. to try and dink it, with, almost toe poke it with his, with his right foot, where he was really calling out for a right foot cushion onto his left foot, away from the covering defender, and then make a clean connection with his, with his so-called weaker foot. Fowler was capable of doing, not a sweet strike on his right but he was capable of finishing mm. off his right foot in those situations. We had him over at a roadshow on two different occasions, so I got to talk to him twice, Dundalk and then one at the um, Olympia. And he was like, he was really good. He's really funny. He's funny lad. And yeah. so I was reading his book, and it is amazing his story. So he was the first millionaire teenager footballer, you know, in terms of he signed a contract that earned him over a million quid. He was right. the, the start of that big money. Yeah. But like, it was funny. Like around that time when he's getting this massive contract, he's still just hanging out with his mates, and they're on pay phones ringing people and pretending that like they're the radio station and the people have won a competition and stuff and just hanging out by the takeaway. Yeah. Uh, like, and he was, that Liverpool team for pranks on each other were disgusting. I mean, they were shitting in each other's wash bags. They were shitting in each other's shoes. They were just shitting in each other's stuff all the time. I, yeah, like Neil like, Ruddock, Fowler was up for it. Like there, it was it was grim. Just J- Jason was there at the time. Was he ba- Phil Babbitt arrived at that time? Probably, I'm not, yeah. I'm not too, like, a few kids are yeah, look a little bit kiddish. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah. 
I mean, yeah, it gives you that impression, quite, quite grounded foul in some, in some respects, yeah. like, you know, but in terms so. of his, yeah, but both that's his background, his, you know what I mean, could say working class background, all of that kept those kind of mates around him all the way, all the way through and that type of thing. Yeah, but he, but his ability, his ability was exceptional from a very early age, yeah. like, you know what I mean? And Patrick against Arsenal, at what age? 18, 19, was he when he got the quickest yeah. Patrick against Arsenal? Uh, I'm a Liverpool and Irish football fan, says this uh, texture. I was at the match on Friday. Robbie was crazy competitive and fit. Was he fit? Robbie Keane or Robbie Feller? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, yeah. I think it's Robbie Keane. Yeah, says, Robbie was at it. Yeah, Robbie, yeah, Robbie was up for it. No, Robbie was up for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like, he only retired about a year ago. Yeah, yeah it's true. Yeah. <laughs> Robbie, it must be keen. <laughs> a lot of the lads are. A lot of the lads, it was game on. Like, it was game yeah. on. Robbie was crazy competitive and fit. Kenny was excellent, I thought, says the texter, and was one of the very few who did the full 90 and was the oldest player who did so. What a reader of the game he still is, obviously well aware of where danger might come from at all times, even when he ventured high up the pitch later on in the game, says Barry and Carlo. P.S. Ireland deserved more on the scoreboard. That's a nice text to get in. Barry sounds like he knows what he's talking about. Yeah, Kenny, just accept yeah, no, it. No. Just say thanks. <laughs> no, it's no, it's no, nice to get a compliment, but no credit to the, a lot of the uh, supporters as well. Sh uh, ah, get yeah. A lot of people talk. We talk about the players turning up, but for me, it's all about the supporters. I spoke to a few of them in the hotel after the game. A family there down from uh, Longford drove down for the game. Three young kids had booked right. into the hotel. What hotel that, was that? that where you all were? Where you were? Staying? Yeah, yeah, in the hotel we were staying in uh, in uh, Bald Bridge. The old Bewley Hotel has been taken over now. It's uh, Clayton, is it? Yeah. Yeah, Clayton, I tell you, really nice, done a refurbished job downstairs in the bar, beautiful. But yeah, so even that, speaking to the fan, oh, down from Longford, oh, fair play to you, driven, mm. yeah, you, going back to now, we booked a hotel, we're going to, you're thinking, bloody hell, you know, tickets, cars, coming down the hole, you know, I wanted to come down and, and you know, show the, not just to watch a game of football, but show the support mm. uh, for, the fa uh, for the family, which was the most important thing, so, mm. yeah, little stories like that, you know what I mean, probably don't get enough, enough of a mention, and the supporters haven't spoken about enough in that respect, because it wasn't for them turning up, jumping into the cars, trains and whatever, and making their and way. They don't know the what ground. kind of game they're going to get, you know, they yeah. do it's a real show. I think, they did, I think they did a pretty good idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's important. I think the players at the back of your mind, you, you want to make it into a game. You're a little bit conscious of the fact that people have come and you know, yeah. paid some money. You want to make it a bit of... So you want that little bit of a competitive edge to it as what well. What boots did you wear? Uh, do you know, I don't know. I've only got one, I've only got one pair. I, I pulled out of the garage some time ago. Umbra, was it? Or I, you wore I, them for 90 minutes four days ago. Yeah, no, I, would, I wouldn't. You no interest in that. I wouldn't have any interest in what boots I was wearing. No. I'd say you're the only player who couldn't tell me what boots they were wearing on Friday night. Now of the whole two squads, that is unbelievable no. to me. I can tell you what boots I was wearing no, 15 years no. ago. Ah, no, Kenny. They're the tools no, of your trade. That, that wouldn't be no. I that wouldn't be you. I haven't, like I said, I haven't had them out an awful lot of that for a long time. Now and they'll be bright so. pink Nikes or something. Will they be? I tell you what did surprise me. Oh, go on. Because I'm one for getting, I need to stretch, I need to have hot bath now for me is it, hot bath, straight out. Pretty much. Yeah, this is, and this, I was in the dressing room before the game, they forced home in the dressing room. And I, nice, I they? need to, yeah, yeah, well, this is, I hadn't seen them. Okay. So I walked in, big, huge, big area. Yeah. Oh, bloody hell. I said, Wait, where's the bath? I said to the, where's the, around the corner. So I thought, right, brought me towel thinking, like, quick bath, fill it up, two minutes, jump in, out, stretch, uh, get a rub. Yeah. Uh, Happy, happy days. So walked around the corner, look, looked up, two big communal uh, size bags, like like mini swimming pools. <laughs> You're not gonna fill I'm, that I'm up. looking for the single. I'm looking for the single, <laughs> like the single small. And I went. I said to the bit, came on, how long does it take to fill that bath? I'll be thirty five, forty minutes. <laughs> the change. Oh no. Or did you start boiling the kettle? So the so this state, state of the art uh, dressing room couldn't, couldn't accommodate me with a hot bath oh, before the game. Well, listen, you're gonna have to write yeah. to Steve and point that point. Um, we've got to take a short break and then we'll be back with final thoughts on the evening's football. They're into out of time now. Juve won, Ajax 2. Ajax have beaten Cristiano Ronaldo's Juventus. Ajax are going through to the semi-finals. It's an, actually an amazing story. And it's still 3-0 uh, Barcelona. In fact, it's gone full-time at the camp now. Back in one sec. For midfield is real. He's not a box to box. He's not defensive. He can't do a fucking killer pass. Why is he on the fucking pitch? What for what? See him come here and fucking boss us at Old Trafford. This is Man United you're talking. See him come here and fucking boss us. Rojo, what was he? What was his tactics? As soon as you get Rojo, don't fucking boo it. We're not fucking stole. 
We're man f***ing in here. What? That was diabolical, that. Martial is playing against a f***ing centre midfielder in doubt. Take the f***ing on. Take him on the f***ing team. We're man f***ing in here. That was diabolical, that. Off the ball on News Talk. Over two centuries, one family business in Dublin has earned a name for excellence in funeral care. Every day they continue to work hard to retain that good name. The name is Fannigans. Dubliners trust Fannigans to take care of them on their final journey with empathy, compassion, and dignity. And Fannigans never forget whose journey it is. In over 200 years, some things don't change. Fannigans. When your thoughts are with them, ours are with you. The Fannigan Group includes Carnegie's, Kerwin's and Nichols. The Audi Approved Plus used car sales event is now on. Discover your premium used Audi today with a 12-month warranty and exclusive 3.9% APR available only at your local authorised Audi dealer. It doesn't have to be new to be everything you've dreamed of. Finance is made under a higher purchase agreement and subject to lending criteria. Deposit required. Terms and conditions apply. Volkswagen Bank GmbH Branch Ireland is authorised by the Federal Financial Supervisory Authority in Germany and regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland for conduct of business rules. Visit audi.ie slash used cars. Off the ball. This is News Talk. Yeah, welcome back. Uh, Full time. Juventus won, Ajax 2, they've beaten Juventus, coming from behind to win 3-2 in aggregate. I'm watch- we're watching them celebrate here in front of the UI fans. My, oh, heart, my heart's already breaking that this beautiful team are going to be broken up before they even get a chance to go. Uh, just before we get final thoughts from Kenny, earlier on we asked you three questions. Who was the top point scorer in this year's Six Nations, Kenny? Ooh, England. Which player? Oh, come on! The question! Which player? Yeah, England. <laughs> <laughs> no main country. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Owen Farrell. Oh, when right. was the last time Wales won the Grand Slam? 2012. Where did Ireland finish in the Six Nations? Uh, lower down than hoped and expected. Third. Good. Congratulations to Stephanie King, Orla Connolly and Barry O'Shea. You've all won a green ticket. You'll be at our special event on May 9th in Dublin where one lucky person is going to win a trip to Japan all with thanks to Heineken Worldwide Partner to the Rugby World Cup 2019 in Japan. So, well done, you guys. We'll give you a shout later to make sure you know all about that. Uh, tomorrow morning, OTBAM live on all our social channels. We'll be back at 7 in the evening. Final thoughts on the evening's football, uh, Kenny? A chastening night for Manchester United and Ali Gunnar Solskjaer. Yeah, it was, but just uh, really kind of a highlight in terms of the qualities Manchester United have at present and their deficiencies as well and the type of work that Solskjaer needs to do in his uh, recruitment in the in the summer yeah. and as for uh, yeah as for Ajax just a fairy tale you're talking about the split up but let's just enjoy the team no, as, totally. as they are at the moment those young faces there celebrating in the corner of the pitch either in Turin this evening it's great wonderful to see that'll be in the semi-final uh, more Champions League tomorrow Kenny's not around tomorrow but we'll talk to him um, I'll see you when I see you Kenny see you when I see you okay Tom Dunn's on the way next talk to you then <laughs>